Christ is among us. He is on the show. Good evening, everybody. Let's have a seat for just a minute. Today was the beheading of St. John the Baptist in the church calendar. Tomorrow is the after feast. So he gets two days for, for St. John the Baptist in this case. He has many other holidays throughout the year. But part of that, why we have two days right now, is because today was actually a fast, a strict fast, and tomorrow is the feast. And that is because the particulars, of course, of the story of St. John the Baptist, it was at Herod's birthday party, a big feast, that in his drunkenness and licentiousness that he gave in to the cruel request of um, Herodias to have the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And so as a result of that, uh, in, in some uh, places, and, and, and I encourage it because I think it's hard and fun, and sometimes those are good things, is to fast on this day, not only from the typical foods, but actually not to eat anything served on a platter, not to eat anything cut with a knife, and not to eat anything in the shape of a head, anything round. Right? Is that it? Is there anything else? I think that's the special criteria. There might be more. You could probably get even farther. Um, because it's Saturday this year, though, uh, even monastic practice allows a little wine and oil, so don't be too strict on yourself today. Take something for, for the labors of the week and for the strengthening so tomorrow you're in good shape. Uh, but uh, if you haven't kept that fast today, you still have plenty of time. You have until 12 o'clock tonight, so you get at least six hours in if you try. Um, the, pe the, the point of this is that we have fasting before we have feasting. We have repentance before we have rejoicing. We have a time of, of questioning and self-examination and confession before we go to open our mouth and praising to God. There's always this pattern in the life of the church. And that's why St. John comes before Christ. In fact, Christ himself made the point. He said, John came eating locusts and wild honey, and, and you called him a madman, and the Son of Man comes eating and drinking, and you call him a drunkard. John was that austere religious scholar of his time. He was the austere figure in the desert, and Christ came the bridegroom time for the feasting, a beautiful time. And so there's a, a, an incredible verse, I don't know if you caught it in the, uh, is this, this is I guess called the doxasticon, it's the, it's the verse that follows the glory, the doxa. And in it, it talks about Herod's birthday, but then it says, Herod joined in taking delight in murder, but let us join in celebrating with love the blessed slaying of John the Baptist. For he was in hell in anticipation to proclaim to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death the life, the day spring on from on high, Christ our God, who alone is rich in great mercy. What an incredible uh, idea that is. It's kind of jarring. Let us with love celebrate the blessed slaying of St. John the Baptist. Because, really, there doesn't seem to be much blessed about it. I mean, it's a pretty rotten deal. He was in jail for speaking the truth to power, and his political enemies got rid of him and had him executed. There doesn't seem to be much blessing. But that is in a worldly sense. And if that's all there is, then that's right. That's it. That's terrible. It's a tragedy. But if there is a life after this one, if Christ did truly rise from there, that nothing else matters, right? Then St. John's entrance into Sheol, into the Hades, into the pit, the shadow of death, was fulfilling his prophetic role as the greatest of the prophets, who not only preached to the living in his day, but also would prepare the way of the Lord even in Hades. That's what I talked about this morning after the liturgy. All the, all the teachings about that that existed and from the beginning as well. So what an incredible thing to be able to say, I celebrate the blessed slaying of St. John the Baptist. What men thought would be evil and meant for evil, God allowed for good. And that is what we have to look at in all the things that we see in the world that are like this, all these terrible tragedies. If, if this world is all it is, yes, there's nothing to celebrate. But if 
what we believe is true, and I believe is true, I don't know about you, but I do, that we can even rejoice, even in terrible tragedies, to see humanity be elevated to such glory, to see a, a man fulfill such an incredible destiny with such great glory, to become a champion of truth and righteousness forever. That's the kind of man St. John the Baptist was. Christ himself said, there's no greater man who lived on earth than St. John the Baptist. So let us rejoice now as we go tomorrow after our fast is over. We will celebrate and we will feast. So make sure you do feast. Again, in the spirit of joy and love and sobriety that, that is given here, uh, not in the recklessness of her. Christ is among us. God bless you. May you be well. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, if you'd like to stay for confession, I do have time to hear some confessions. We'll also, if you're here for uh, exercises, we'll be up there on the side of the lawn again. Is the, get, did the lawn get mowed? Did you see? I didn't see. Hopefully it's not too... We'll find a lawn. We'll find a lawn that works. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so God bless. Christ is among us. He is not enough.